Data binding allows us to take data from a variety of data sources, including XML files, databases, custom objects, and more, and bind those into web controls in our applications. So in this section, we're going to talk a little bit about data binding, what it is, and what data source controls offer us. And then we'll move forward and talk about expressions and how we can use these different data source controls. So first up, data binding is something that's built into ASP.NET. So the overall framework has a way to take a result set from, say, a database and bind that into a control such as a grid view, which we've seen in previous modules. Now, in the old days when we did that, we'd oftentimes have to write some looping logic to loop through the different result set rows and then write out the HTML that would be appropriate for those rows. Well, with ASP.NET, we can actually leverage data binding features to take our data, get that result set, and then bind it right in to something like a grid view with just a minimal, minimal amount of code on our part. Now, something that can really help with this is data source controls. Data source controls allow us to grab data from databases, XML files, or custom object structures, and then bind that data into these different web controls. And you can bind, as mentioned, relational data, hierarchical data, or even custom collections such as a list of customer, as an example. Now, data aware controls such as grid view, details view, list view, and there's many others, they all have a special property that works with data source controls called data source ID. And that's going to become really important when we hook up a data source control that knows how to get the data to the control such as a grid view that actually knows how to render the data. Now there's several different types of data source controls available and you can see those here. In fact this is the wizard when you use data source controls that Visual Studio will pop up so you do have the option to type these but it's definitely much easier to use the built-in Visual Studio wizard and I'll be showing that coming up here. So you can see we have an access database, uh, database source control we can do a SQL database. Now it says SQL, but you can actually use it against multiple types of database, not just SQL Server. We have an Entity Framework one, and this would be for the Entity Framework models that you might create. We have a Link to SQL data source for Link to SQL diagrams. The Object Data Source I mentioned briefly earlier is used in more N-tier or sometimes you'll hear N-layer architectures where you or somebody else on your team might have already written a data access control and you simply need to tie into that control and bind the data that it returns. So we can use an object data source for that. And then finally we have two hierarchical controls built in and these both work with XML type structures out of the box. The first is the site map and this is used for more navigation type features. And then finally we have an XML data source control that can bind to any type of XML feed such as an RSS feed out there. So those are the basic data source controls that are built in out of the box with ASP.NET and by using these and walking through the wizards that I'll be showing you you can get a lot going in your web pages without having to write a lot of code. So now let's switch gears and we'll talk a little bit about something else you'll see in conjunction with data source controls and that's data binding expressions. Data binding expressions are an important part of the whole data binding process in ASP.NET. So we're going to take a quick look at some of the different expressions you're going to encounter as I do some demos coming up in this module so that when we see them it will make a little more sense. So expressions provide a really simple and a super compact way to either bind data to controls or maybe even get data from something. A good example of this, if you're going to use a data source control that can hit a database and that's defined in your page and if we're trying not to write a lot of C Sharp or VB then how are you going to get the connection string? Sure you could hard code it into your page but probably not a good thing because you might have multiple pages that use the same connection string. So we'll store that connection string in web.config and then we'll use a data binding expression to go get it. That would be one example. Now the others that are shown here are used for data binding. So eval is used once you have a result set, and let's say we have a row back and that row has a first name property in it, then that property needs to be bound somehow. And the way we can do that is we can use the eval statement. Now I said property in this instance because it might come from a custom set of objects, but it could just as easily be a field in a result set as well. So property or field 
you can use this to actually bind that particular data wherever you'd want it to be written out in the page. Now eval just writes it out. Bind can actually be used to kind of go both ways. It'll write it out plus if a form's posted back in say an edit scenario, we can actually take care of that and update the database or whatever our tar target data source is. And then the final one listed here is the XPath expression. And this is used with the XML data source. Now the XPath expression is not something we're going to cover specifically in this module, but I do want to touch on it briefly. And it's basically used to supply an XPath statement. So if we loaded XML data up into memory, how do we query that data and actually get out the target nodes or target data that we want to write out to the page? Well, the XPath expression can be used to do that. We can give it an XPath statement if you've done XPath before, and it'll go find that for us. So the last one here is an example of using the most common expression that you'll come across, especially if you bind result sets, multiple rows of data, and that is the eval. So the first thing to note on all of these is you'll notice this percent pound or percent hash, however you want to look at it. That represents a data binding expression. And so you'll always know when you see that, that there's some type of data binding going on, whether it's hierarchical data with XML or whether it's custom object properties or whether it's fields from a result set that came from a database. So in this example, the eval, this would be used if we want to bind a specific field into a control, such as a grid view. So you might have a grid view, and you'll define how every row should be written out and the type of HTML that should be generated. Well, the eval statement allows us to say, hey, I want to write out the value of, and then we can put, for instance, first name here. If that was one of our fields, we're getting back from the database. So eval is very common, something you use quite often in your ASP.NET web forms when uh, data binding. Now here's an example of using eval within a grid. So we have our grid view web control. You'll notice we have the ID, the run at server. Very, very standard, much like we've covered up to this point in the previous module. But we have something called a template column. Now there's different ways to write out data with grid view, list view, repeater, and other controls. And the way we do this is through something called templates. We don't want to have to write the looping code ourselves to loop through every row in the data and then write out the HTML. Instead, what we're going to do is define all of the columns we want to write out in the grid and then bind the data to the grid and let it take care of writing out the HTML. So in this example, uh, we have a custom column. That's why it's called a template column. And for each row, that's what item template represents, for each item or each row in the data that we're binding, we want to write out the value of contact name. And so that'll go in, grab the contact name out of each row and do it. So if we have 50 rows, this item template is going to get called 50 times. We'll have a single column though that'll be written out and then it'll write out the contact name uh, 50 times. Now of course you can repeat this. So under this one I could add more template columns and more and more and more. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this. So that would be an example, though, of actually applying a data binding expression. And so now that we've introduced the, the percent pound and what a data binding expression looks like, let's go ahead and jump into data source controls and see how this stuff can be used.